Robert Pattinson's career has come full circle. We first saw him as a wizard in Harry Potter, but after dying a human, he turned into a sparkly vampire in the Twilight series. Come 2021, we'll finally see that vampire turn into a bat. But before the trailer for The Batman was released, DC fans weren't too happy about Pattinson getting cast as Gotham's next caped crusader. It seems like people often forget how Michael Keaton's casting was wildly disdained too. That is until they finally had a chance to see him portray the role. Or remember how a lot of people simply couldn't imagine how Heath Ledger would give Joker justice? until he went on to become one of the most iconic Jokers on screen and became the first comic book movie actor to ever bag an Oscar for his portrayal of the role. The jury is still out whether or not Pattinson will prove critics wrong the way Keaton and Heath Ledger did. Nevertheless, Pattinson's acting resume proves that he has the talent and range to pull off a dark, brooding Batman. Twilight haters be damned. Welcome to The Bestest, the channel that provides you the bestest news and videos you should know about. On this episode, we've rounded up the top 10 movies that prove there's so much more to Robert Pattinson than Edward Cullen. Before we start, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for more amazing videos. Stick around till the end of the video because number one is a movie you wouldn't want to miss. Let's begin the countdown with number 10. Kismopolis. Back in 2012, Pattinson collaborated with director David Cronenberg in the haunting yet seductive sci-fi drama Kismopolis. He plays the role of a young billionaire wandering around the near-future cyber capital of Manhattan in search of the meaning of life. It isn't the most well-known title on Pattinson's gallery of films, but after watching this, it makes so much more sense why he was cast as young Bruce Wayne. Pattinson exhibits his aptitude for the bizarre, painting a convincing picture of a man deluded by wealth and at the brink of self-destruction. If you did not expect this from Pattinson, just wait till you learn about which actor he out-crazied in the number one movie on this list. But before that, at number 9, The Rover. A slow-burning film of niche taste, The Rover is Pattinson's first film after the Twilight series. It's also his first collab with A24, one of the many independent filmmakers that Pattinson strives to bring into the public eye. This sci-fi thriller is set in a bleak and morose dystopia in Australia. Pattinson plays the role of Ray, a childlike wanderer prone to stuttering and tics. Because of his believability and willingness to fully engulf himself into a character, Hansen was highly praised and, at a time when people weren't exactly willing to take him seriously as an actor just yet, he was able to prove his talents and started turning industry heads. At number 8, Damsel Although Pattinson has been appearing in serious dramas for the most part of his career, he has proven himself to be exceptionally gifted in comedy as well. Playing alongside Mia Wasikowska, Pattinson stars in the absurdist western dark comedy Damsel as an aloof, pathetic man with a gold tooth and an overinflated sense of self-importance. He further proves his impressive acting range as he pulls off the character despite the challenge of a tricky balance, capturing just the right amount of self-delusion without diving into being cartoonish. At number 7, The King In this Netflix original historical drama, Pattinson shows up in the final third of the movie as the Dauphin of France, a scene-stealing adversary to King Henry V of England, played by Timothée Chalamet, as they battle over the seat of power. Sporting long flowing locks and an equally absurd but brilliant French accent, it's easy to tell that Pattinson is having a blast. Director David Michaud himself told Variety during an interview, and we quote, Pretty much in ways that I fully 100% endorse and love, that character is a Robert Pattinson creation. At number 6, High Life. In this art house film set in the distant future, Pattinson takes the lead in a confounding, sublime film 
that follows a crew of death row inmates sent out into the edge of the galaxy. Penson stars as Monte, an ex-criminal fighting to find his way back to humanity with a young daughter at his side. Although the movie is told in fragments like jumping back and forth between the past and the present, Penson's performance keeps this hypnotic film on its course. He effectively conveys the weighted morality that makes this disturbing commentary on the nature of humanity just a little short of a masterpiece. Pretty impressive, right? And we're only halfway through the list. Don't put down that bucket of popcorn just yet because number one is sure to convince you that Robert Pattinson has got the acting chops to be an iconic Bruce Wayne. Meanwhile, back to our list at number five. Remember Me. Mid-Twilight Saga, Penson appeared in a coming-of-age romance flick with an intriguing twist that might ruin you for days. Here, Penson delivers a powerful performance as Tyler Hawkins, a young troubled man struggling with a tense family dynamic and who later falls for Ellie, played by Emily Deravine. The movie is a love-it-or-hate-it kind of deal, but there's no denying that Pattinson's portrayal of the feckless, dissipated Tyler made this film a devastating, original movie that balances unclear genre boundaries. Next up at number 4, The Lost City of Z. Based on the true story of British explorer Percy Fawcett and his search for an undiscovered civilization, The Lost City of Z shows us that although Penson fares well as a leading man, He's also a great character actor. He dropped 35 pounds to play the role of Corporal Henry Costin, the loyal aide of Percy, who is played by Charlie Hunnam. But it's not just the drastic physical adjustments that made this a memorable Panson role. He embodied the character so meticulously, and this understated performance just showed his talent for saying a lot despite saying very little. Making it to the number three spot, The Childhood of a Leader. Back in 2015, at a time when Pattinson had started showing a flair for the avant-garde, this grossly underrated film was released without getting as much attention as it deserved. Set in Europe during World War I, Brady Corbett's commanding directorial debut chronicles the rise of a diplomatic sociopath from a young age as seen through Charles's eyes. Charles, played by Penson, witnesses the unfolding of the Treaty of Versailles and the first gasps of fascism in Europe. Although Penson doesn't take center stage in this award-winning film, he delights us with a wordless yet utterly intense dual performance that is completely chilling. The number two spot goes to Good Time. In yet another eye-catchingly electric A24 film, Robert Pattinson once again shreds his eye candy status to give way to a shaggy-haired thief in serious need of a shower. He plays the role of Constantine, a morally gray person racing through the nasty underbelly of NYC to help free his mentally handicapped brother from jail. Delivering a perfectly calibrated performance, Penson anchored his potential to capture the same level of emotional intensity as crime drama giants like Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. Okay, when people start comparing you to these guys, you know you're doing something right. But when you manage to out-crazy, out-weird, and bewilder an already bewildering actor like Willem Dafoe, man, isn't that something else. And that's exactly how the next movie got into the top spot. At number one, The Lighthouse. If there's one film that will 100% help you separate Edward Cullen from Pattinson, that'd be this. Starring in yet another A24 film, Pattinson, alongside veteran Willem Dafoe, takes us on a wild ride in this hypnotic black and white film about two lighthouse keepers who are driven to madness and delusion. As expected, Penson fully throws himself into the role, consistently using a main accent, 
singing sea shanties with abandon and slowly unraveling in a fight against sanity. When asked about Pattinson's unusual acting technique, Defoe says, we quote, He's not interested in craft, I think. He wants to throw himself into deep water and he feels like it will only be true if he's drowning. Unquote. This just shows the kind of dedication that an evolved actor has for his art. Which of these movies do you think is worth giving Pattinson an award for? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to The Bestest and make sure to hit that bell to access more of our videos. Thank you so much for watching and until our next Bestest video.